click the bell icon to get latest videos from ekida hello friends i welcome you all to the second video of the chapter titled representation and description in the last video we have discussed the boundary following algorithm which was our first topic so as the title of this chapter has two terms representation and description the chain codes topic belongs to the first term that is it is the type of representation and the representation of the boundary with respect to certain kind of numbering that are with respect to the straight line segments that we see the details in this video so let us start with understanding chain codes <music> So here we can start with our topic chain codes. The chain codes are used to represent a boundary by a connected sequence of straight line segments of a specified length and also the direction. Typically, the chain code representation of this type is based on to the four or eight connectivity of the segments. So the connectivity of a pixel with respect to its neighbors that we have already covered. while taking the second chapter of this subject that is digital image fundamentals so we move further the direction of each segment is coded by using a numbering scheme such as the ones we can show into the next figure so here the direction numbers or the four connectivity as well as the eight connectivity we have this is the figure a four directional chain code pattern so here we have the four options so on to the right hand side we start at 0 on to the upper side we have the number 1 on to the left hand side we have the number 2 and downwards we have the number 3 here now with respect to this four directional case here we have more directions available so here we can call it to be the eight directional chain code again we start at the right hand side horizontally so it is at 0 then what used to be 0 and 1 in between we have the option here that is first direction so if you take the top direction to be the north then downwards direction to be the south the rightmost direction to be the east and the leftmost direction to be the west so this is the north east direction so that is one then we have second as a direction towards the north if you can say then third between the north and west fourth being towards the west that is the leftmost in having the horizontal orientation then fifth is between the west and south so we can simply say southwest direction that is phi and the south direction can be denoted by the number 6 here that is completely downwards with respect to the pixel location and the last one we can say southeast that is the number 7 represented here so to start at 0 and end at 7 total we have eight directions so the examples of eight directional pattern and the four directional pattern we can visualize in this figure now the digital images usually are acquired and processed in a grid format with the equal spacing into the x as well as y direction the two special coordinate dimensions so the chain code our topic we can generate by the following a boundary into let us say the clockwise direction or we can also go for the anti clockwise direction also but whatever we have selected we should be consistent with that selection and along with following a boundary we can be assigning a direction to the segments connecting every pair of the pixels here so now this method generally is unacceptable for the two principal reasons the first reason we can give the resulting chain of codes actually tend to be quite very very long and the second reason is that any small disturbances along the boundary due to the presence of the noise or imperfect segmentation technique if it is opted on to the original image causes the changes into the code that may not be related to the shape of the boundary an approach frequently used is to resample the boundary by selecting the larger grid spacing that can be illustrated into the figure a then the boundary is traversed a boundary point is assigned to each and every node there of the larger grid depending on to the proximity of the original boundary to that particular node as shown into the next figure b here so here we visualize both the figures the captions are here available 
digital boundary with resampling grid superimposed. So you can visualize the figure A onto the left hand side. Now this is the figure B onto the right hand side. That is the result of resampling. So here on the leftmost image, you find lot many black dots because of resampling of the grid superimposed onto the image sample. The representation of the digital boundary here we have. And after resampling, we have only few corners into the grid represented with the dark dots here. The resampled boundary thus obtained into the figure way. We can be represented by the four or eight connectivity chain code as shown into the next figures that is figure C and figure D respectively. The starting point into the next figure C is actually the arbitrary selection at the top left dot and the boundary is the shortest allowable four or eight connectivity path into the grid of figure B. So here we have the visualization of figure C and figure D. So this is figure C representing the four directional chain code. So at the left hand side and the top corner here we can start. Then we have as per the pattern we have seen for the four connectivity. We are going towards the right hand side. Hence the first digit into the chain code shall be equal to zero. Then again we have the same direction to follow. So it will be again the second digit to be the zero again then we are going downwards so we shall be having the representation of this direction by the number three here so we can find the three number repeated for six nodes here then we have the direction towards the left hand side representing the two as a digit there in the chain code then again we have three then we have two times the left direction representing the digit two then one two 111 one, one into the upward direction then 0 1 1 0 1 completes the sequence here and we come back to the original point here now if you take the case of eight directional chain code some efforts in representation of the chain code will be minimized here the representation will be somewhat shorter here so we again start at the top left corner there that has this representation and starting with zero here. So after this zero, we can go with the representation of the digit seven for this chain code as it is available with the eight connectivity. Then we have four times six representing the downward direction. Then we have five representing the southwest direction two times. Then we have the two times three representing the northwest directions. Then the upward direction can be represented here by the digit two. Then we have 1, 2, 1, 2 and we are back to the original position. Now the boundary representation that we have seen into the figure C as the chain code we can write as 0, 0, 3, 3 and so on up to we get back to the original place with 0, 1 here. And into the right hand side we have seen the figure D. The chain code can be represented as 0, 7, 6, 6 as like we can come back to the original place with 1, 2 at last here. So the accuracy of this resulting code representation actually depends on the spacing of the sampling grid provided earlier. The chain code of the boundary actually depends on the starting point. So we had selected the starting point at the top left corner as arbitrary manner. Now here we simply treat the chain code as a circular sequence of the directional numbers we redefine the starting point so that the resulting sequence of number forms an integer of minimum magnitude we can also normalize for the rotation by using the first difference into the chain code instead of the code itself now this difference is obtained by counting the number of directional changes that is into the counterclockwise direction that separates two adjacent elements of this chain code now for instance, we can take the first difference of the four directional chain code represented as 10103322 as 31330330. If we elect to treat the code as a circular sequence, then the first element of the difference is computed by using the transition between the last and the first components of this chain. 
these normalizations are exact only if the boundaries themselves are invariant to the cases of rotation and the scale changes which in practice is seldom the case found for instance the same object digitized into the two different orientations will in general have the different boundary shapes with the degree of dissimilarity being proportional to the image resolution this effect can be reduced by selecting the chain elements that are large in proportion to the distance between the pixels inside the digitized image and or we have by orienting the resampling grid along the principal axis of the object to be coded along the eigen axis so i hope the understanding of this simple representation technique with the help of chain codes is definitely clear to you people by the next lecture we shall be addressing the topic boundary approximations using the minimum perimeter polygons so i am sure you are definitely getting the knowledge for the subject digital image processing if you want to have some more information regarding any of the concept or the practical sessions or a practice of miscellaneous problem you can definitely subscribe to our ekda channel Thank you.